okay okay let's do some chemistry we're looking at moles today so um let me just get myself sorted and then we'll get into it so we're doing moles and um it's part of chemistry part of the atomic structure unit so let's get down to it all right just need to uh get myself sorted so i can see what's happening in the chat case there's anyone with us today it is summer holiday so not many people in the chat and for some reason whenever I turn the volume down on that thing it always goes even more it's crazy okay so what we're looking at today is moles dreaded topic from GCSE you probably remember that so um, what is a mole adjust my camera a bit Okay, so what is a mole? Is it a furry mammal? No, not when it comes to chemistry. Uh, basically, you might remember what a mole is from GCSE. And it's a very, very large number of particles. Um, how many particles are in one mole? You might remember that. And you might remember the name for the number of particles that are found within one mole. So, how many particles are within one mole? You should remember it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Now, depending on your A-level syllabus, it can be 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Just increase the accuracy slightly more than GCSE. Um, and what do we call that really big number? That's 23 zeros. So that's a, a huge number of particles inside a mole. You might remember the name for that. That's known as Avogadro's constant. I always get mixed up and think, start thinking about avocados, but it's known, named after a man called Avogadro. So it came up with the idea of Avogadro's constant. So this is a huge number used by chemists. Why do we use this? Because atoms and particles are so tiny, it's very, very hard to measure. So we need to measure a large amount. So what can we use this number for, Avogadro's constant? Well, we can switch between this number, the number of particles, and the number of moles. And we can use it in, a, in an equation interchangeably, as we're going to show in this lesson. So, okay. So, a mole is uh, a large number of particles. How many particles are in a mole? Well, you've got six point... That's a bit of a funky six there. 0, 0, 0,22 times 10 to the 23. And that's how many particles are in a mole. Now, that can be a mole of shoes. Uh, that can be a mole of electrons. That can be a mole of dodgy baseball caps. It's just a number, okay? We normally refer to it in, when we're talking about moles of molecules or moles of atoms. It can be ions. Uh, atoms which have lost an electron or or we can just look at moles of electrons as well we did ionization energy just a few lessons back and we talked about removing one mole of electrons so it'd be 6.022 times 10 to the 23 electrons yeah that's right Karam Avogadro's constant that's uh, what it's known as uh, and you can use this number to convert between number of particles and moles. So what we can do is number of particles is equal to number of moles times Avogadro's constant. Uh, so in any exam, they can give you two of these and ask you to find the missing third one. So they might say to you, um, how many, what's the number of water particles in my glass of water? On that note, I'll just take a sip. I would need to know the number of moles and then I need to know Avogadro's constant off by heart, which most of you will know by now anyway. It's just a case of adding a little bit more accuracy with the extra 6.022 instead of some examples at GCSE were just 6 and some were 6.02. So, um, yeah, as long as you know two of them, you can work the third one out. Let's have a go at a few of these. So, looking at the periodic table here, um, and we've got the equation here that you have to know. Uh, the number of particles is equal to the number of moles times Avogadro's constant. You could put that in a magic triangle if you like, however you like to operate with that. 
how many particles are in two moles of methane so if you've got your calculator your scientific one you'll need that for these chemistry lessons uh, see if you can work out how many moles uh, how many particles sorry are in two moles of methane so um, you can put the answer in the chat if you like um, which would be cool and then I'll show you how to go through it you can put up how to do it if you don't have your calculator on you you can just put up what method you would use and uh, without the final answer and I'll put the final answer up so and then the second question is how many particles are in 48 grams of methane and then the third question what is the mass of one molecule of methane if you're watching this on the rerun you can always pause uh, although the amount I waffle you'll have time to calculate the answers to these before I get to them so looking at the first one what you should do for the first one let's zing through the answers that sounds pretty good to me let's have a little look I've got them here in green absolutely 1.24 uh, yeah you're probably right I probably made a calculator error there so um, on your calculator you want to do 6.022 we want the number of particles so we just do Avogadro's times moles so it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23 um, times 2 and you are absolutely right so that's why it's always great to have people in the chat for when I make a like that so 2 times 6.02 um, unlucky Tom you screwed that one up right um, for the second one question 2 wouldn't you use moles equals mass over MR well spotted Karen you would have to do that first definitely so um, I do believe that I need to cuss myself off for getting this one wrong um, hold on can I put an upward sign there yeah the annoying thing when you type you have to put the little arrow going up it's going to be my excuse yeah so you did that perfect so well done you would have to do that first and then you could use it so well done Karam you get a uh, boom yeah and I get a uh, for my mistake next time. yeah okay so for the second one let's have a look 48 over 16 equals 3 moles so you have 3 moles how many particles in 3 moles absolutely you're you're all over it so you're going to do um, I probably made a mistake here as well I was rushing these out when I'm doing these lessons sometimes I'm rushing out a quick example of a question but that's why it's great to have people in the chat doing it so um, yeah so like Karam said if you've been given 48 grams you've got to use the old GCSE mass over MR equals moles so we add up carbon which is 12 hydrogen which is 1 we've got 1 carbon which is 12 4 hydrogens that's 16 um, is the MR for methane we've got 48 grams so mass 48 grams divided by 16 which is the MR equals 3 moles yes another purposeful error here by myself so 48 divided by 16 is 3 so we want to do 3 not 4 3 times 6.02 and if we do 3 on the old calculator times 6.022 times 10 to the 23 we should get uh, did you get for the first one you should get something I'm just showing my calculator to the screen I don't even know if uh, you can see it you should get 1.8 um, 066 times 10 to the 24 for this one so 1.8 times 10 upwards to the 24 boom uh, that's the number of particles if you do three times right and then for question three what is the mass of one molecule of methane uh, yeah now I'd love to hope
that I haven't made a mistake, a boo-boo on this one. Let's have a little look. Okay, so one mole is 16 grams. So you have said uh, one mole equals a mass of 16. Boom. So each mole is 16 grams. So you, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. In theory, that is it. Um, you just take... We know that one mole of methane is 16. It has an MR of 16. That means 6.02 times 10 to the 23 weighs 16 grams for methane, methane or has a mass of 16 grams. So we just divide 16 by 6.022 times 10 to the 23. And hopefully you get that number there. 2.65 times 10 to the 23. Cool. Yeah. So that's the method. I'm not even going to check that one. I don't want to cuss myself off for getting... Uh, for writing that out wrong. So awesome. That's how we use Avogadro's constant. Those are some examples um, of how to do that. And uh, let's have a little look. Um, okay, a couple more questions. A um, couple more things. You, you did this in GCSE really. How many moles of aluminium oxide are present in 5.5 grams so this is just going back and reminding you if you haven't done GCSE chemistry then you're kind of screwed doing a level but you should remember that mass in grams uh, and you got MR which is in holy moly I probably should use something a little bit more sensible than the highlighter pen is in grams per mole so the minus one. So this is how many, the MR tells you how many grams are in one mole. And then, yeah, that's just moles. This is your number of moles. So um, those are your units. So mass in grams divided by MR will give you the number of moles. Or mass in grams divided by moles will give you the MR. Then you can locate an unknown substance. We're looking at aluminium which is over here and it's a little bit small on the old camera so I can tell you that the AR of aluminium when you're dealing with one atom it's the AR is 27 we're looking at oxygen as well which I've covered up with my fat face so we'll just say that ox um, AL is 27 on the AR or atomic mass uh, the relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16. And thankfully at A-level, these ones are whole numbers. Pick that so it wouldn't get a little bit too complicated. And if you look at some of these, like nickel, it's 58.7. So uh, you've got to put, um, you've got to include the accuracy at A-level. And when you're adding up MRs, you have to include that. Okay, so what is going to be the MR of aluminium oxide? So the first step here, and this is more like GCSE, I guess, but can you, you still will, could get these at A-levels. Normally they'll form part of a bigger question. So what is the MR of aluminium oxide of Al2O3? You're going to need two aluminiums and three oxygens. So we're really going to get to... 54 plus 48. What would be my next step? So once I've worked out... <laughs> once I've worked out the MR of aluminium oxide, what would be my next step if I then want to work out how many moles there are? So what I want to do is 5.5 grams mass, which is there, over the top of the MR, which is, I'm hoping it's 102. 2 times 27 is 54. Sometimes my mental math isn't so great. 5.5 divided by 102. So we don't have a lot of aluminium oxide. So it's 0 0.0539. Now, it really depends on the question. It, there's a lot of other numbers after that. But at A level, you want to go to at least... Well, it depends on the question. They'll ask you in the... They'll give you the information in the question. But 
you could go to 3DP. So in round round up with the nine, carry it over, round up to 0 0.054 um, or two significant figures, same thing. So you could round that up to 0 0.054. So all easy, that should all be cool. And um, yeah. So we've got a couple of uh, more people in the room today. So that's just GCSE. So nice one, Karam. Um, right, let's have a little look. Okay, got a bit of a challenge. So these are AQA. Last week I used some OCR exam questions with uh, what we were doing. These are some AQA multiple choice questions. You're going to have roughly a minute per question here. So see if you can get involved in these. So this is, um, see if you can come up with the three correct answers for these multiple choice questions. Um, that'd be cool. And uh, yeah. Oh, I've got a little video to play for this. I like to play some stupid little videos. So, um, yeah. Say when. Round one. Let's go! Okay, yeah. So, um, uh, it's a challenge. So, if I set a timer of three minutes, can you uh, answer these? And then I'll go through the answers. Um, it's uh, uh, yeah. It's best I haven't prepared the answers and I just work through them because when I prepare them, I seem to do them wrong. Okay. Uh, right. I'm probably going to take my face out of here for just a minute while you have a go at that soul. All right, guys, have a go at these. And in three minutes time, I'll go over the answers. In your A-levels, you will probably only get 70 seconds for each multiple choice question is your timing. So obviously now this is going to take like two minutes to do each one, but uh, it's a challenge. So give it your best shot. See if you can come up with three letters, i.e. three answers, CBA, DDD, BBB, whatever. Have a go.
Okay, there's my crusty little timer. Took me took me a minute to get that up and running. E well, only two minutes left. Okay, um have have you been able to come up with any of the answers here? Let me know if it's too small for you to read as well. I can make that bigger, that image. So if I just click on this, for instance, no, that's not having it now. Okay. If I go there, I can make this a little bit bigger if you find that hard to read. So what would you do here? Any ideas? in the chat how you'd answer any of these so propane is oh uh, yeah someone's come up with an answer there well done Karim propane is C3H8 so we would do 44 nice is the MR divide ah Little mistake I spotted there. You have got that you're on the right, you're on the right thing there. You're on the right thing. A slight mistake. So um, what you want to do is when you say divide, what goes on top? The mass or the MR? So we want to convert this to 5,000 grams. And by writing the symbol grams, that should trigger, oh, that's the mass. Then divide by the MR. So we've got to find the MR of propane. You're absolutely right. That's C3H8. If we add that up, that's 3 times 12 plus 8. 3 times 12 is 36. Plus 8 is 44. So the MR is 44. And that will give us the moles. And so we do 5,000 mass over MR, so 5,000, so that's a serious amount of moles. It's about 113 um, 0.6 moles. Pui. Yeah, 113.6 moles. We then want to times that by um, Avogadro's. times 10 to the 23 incredible working here so and what would our answer be so if we do that and we go 5000 divided by 44 we get 113 moles or 113.6 we then times that by 6.0 whoopsie uh, 6.022 times 10 to the 23 and our answer comes out as 6.8 times 10 to the 25, or closest to it, 6.83 something. So your answer should be, once you do 113 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23, you'll get that. Cool. Let's look at the next one. Which one of the following contains the greatest number of moles of methanol? Oh, this one is long. This one is long. Like what you should see from this is that the multiple choice are actually really, really tough. So um, they can be really, really tough. Let me put my face back up, uh, unfortunately, on the old um, camera here. So how would I do the next one? So for the next one... Um, Pretty tricky. We got meth number of moles of methanol. The Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. They've even worked out the MR of methanol is 32 to save us time. Again, how you do this in 60 seconds, 70 seconds? Well, it's tricky. Some of these you can do quickly and guess out or work out fast. That top one you could do in 60 seconds if you're you could do it in probably 30 seconds. If you quickly went for the top one, five kilograms is five thousand. Quickly work out MR of propane in your head. Do 5,000 over 44 is 113. 
Avogadro's and you get that answer. So that one is like a 30 second one, which gives you an extra 30 seconds. So now you've got like 90 seconds to do this second one. So the second one, very, very tricky. What we're going to do here is which one of the following contains the greatest number of moles? So I need to turn this into moles. How would you turn 6.6 .6 times 22 times 10 to the 22 into moles? Well, it's not even one mole, is it? Because one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So if I want to take this in moles, they've given me the number of particles. Remember our little equation that we uh, talked about earlier, um, which I haven't written up here. But our equation was uh, number of particles... Ah. <laughs> equals, I'm going to do the symbols, it's too long. Moles is like that, uh, plus, not, not, not divide. No, moles times. Uh, the moles times Avogadro's constant. Uh, they've just used the symbol like an L for Avogadro's constant, so I'm using that in mine. So, here I've got the number of particles. I need to convert it back to moles. So, what would you do to find um, N? What would I do here? I do, you can see from my crusty equation, I need to just move my camera, uh, sh sh little, uh, shorten my face a little bit. There we go. Um, so, what we want to do, number of particles equals moles times Avogadro's constant so we want to do the number of particles divided by Avogadro's we move Avogadro's underneath number of particles and we'll get the moles so let's do 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 22 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23 and what you're going to find when you do that so you're going to divide that by Avogadro's constant we're using the symbol L here Avogadro's number and you're going to find that you're going to get 0 0.109 moles there or thereabouts now the reason why this one is hard sometimes you can just spot these straight off like yeah that's the biggest or that's the smallest right what about 3.3 .3 grams how do we turn mass into moles how do we turn mass into moles anyone got an idea how we're going to turn the mass into moles what do you reckon Karen? we got 3.3 .3. we they've told us the mr of methanol to save us some time so we're going to do three 0.3 grams, my god, it's all merging into one, divided by 32. And guess what? This is going to be a really close number. It's going to be pretty close. So 3.3 um, divided by 32, which is the MR. So we're doing mass over MR. And we get a smaller number, but it's pretty close, which shows that you've actually got to carry these out. It's 0 0.103 moles. So it's actually a smaller amount of moles. That's right, Karen. So, and remember, you wouldn't have a lot of time to do these, but, um, okay, I haven't gone through how to do this one yet, so I'm going to save that. We won't go through that, and I'll just tell you that that is smaller than the previous two. And then, now I don't know if you were doing triple when you did concentration. If you did concentration and moles, you might know, do you know how to work out the number of moles if you're given the volume and the concentration? And you know how to turn 70 centimetres into the correct unit to use in moles and concentration. So what I've got here is a volume. I've got a volume, V, and 1.5 M. It looks like moles, but it's actually the concentration. Uh, when we write 1.5 with a capital M, that's actually concentration so what we do here is we divide 70 centimeters by a thousand to create uh, decimeters when we um, using concentration of moles chemists like to do this in decimeters so this is um, 0 0.07 
decimeters. We're then going to times that by 1.5 and that is going to equal 0 0.105. So actually that is all smaller than this top one. The correct answer for this, by the way, <laughs> this one is up here is going to be bigger. Now, I haven't shown you how to do C because we're going to do that in the next slide. We're going to go over that in the next slide or two in the ideal gas equation. So you multiply concentration by volume. Yeah. So the, the old triangle for the for this one that you want to do, uh, you might remember that from triple science, is moles is concentration over volume. And what's a bit tricky there is they've written 1.5 with a capital M. That means 1.5 mole per decimeter. That's a concentration. So the third one, I think, is a little bit more straightforward. That one was quite hard because all the answers were 0 0.1. So the one with the most moles is A. So the answers go C, then A. So we've got C here, A here. If we look at this third one, which of these contains the most molecules? So again, once they start number, uh, mentioning the number of molecules or particles, this time we want to find the number of particles. So what are we going to do? Look at that little equation I've written in white just above this question, number three. We're going to do N times that L in brackets, which is the Avogadro's. So we're going to do moles times Avogadro's. So I need to calculate moles and then times it by Avogadro's. So <laughs> I need to convert um, 0 0.031 kilograms. So uh, first of all, when we're doing moles, I need to times, I need to get that into grams, don't I? So that is 31 grams. Call it 31.1, but uh, yeah, I better be a bit more accurate. 31.1 grams. So that's the mass, and I want to find moles. So I'm going to divide that by the MR of carbon dioxide. This is the MR, uh, is 44. And this gives me the moles, 0 0.7 moles. In fact, I don't need, I don't. there's no need for me to times moles by Avogadro's. Why not? Why don't I need to do the third step or the last step and times it to find the number of particles? Because it just asked me which one has the most molecules. So whatever one has the most moles will give the biggest result when I times it by Avogadro's. So I don't need to find out the number of particles. So I just need to find out the moles. The one with the most moles has the most particles. So what would I do with 29.6? You can try doing this along in your head. I go 29.6 grams. They've given me the mass in the form I want here, so it's quicker. By the MR, divide it by the MR of carbon dioxide, monoxide, 12 plus 16 in my head. Carbon plus one oxygen is 28, I believe. And so that's going to be less. So you wouldn't even need to do this in the exam. The moment you know, oh no, that's going to be more, isn't it? That's going to be more. Yeah, that's more. So this equals 1.05. So really, in the exam, you can round that up to 1.06. In the exam, you don't need the answers. You just need to know which is bigger. So you can just quickly do it in your head. Which one's got more moles will have more particles. You don't need to do the long thing of actually finding out how many particles. 2.22 times 10 to the 4 micrograms of oxygen. Okay, just off the top of my head, that doesn't sound like a lot of moles. But just to do it, it's not micrograms, is it? Do you know what the M stands for? The little m actually doesn't stand for micro. It stands for milligrams. If I want to change those back into grams, I need to divide by 1,000. So I'm going to do 2.22 divided by 1,000 to get them back into grams. And I end up with 2.22 times 10 to the minus 3. If it was micrograms, I'd need to divide by a million to get them back into grams. So that is the grams. I'm then going to divide that by oxygen's uh, MR, which is 32.
Yeah, well done, Karim. You worked it out quickly. And that's the kind of skills you need. You don't need to go through and work everything out. That's absolutely right. Yeah, that's 0 0.69. And then you can look at the MR of ozone and it's going to be 13.3 divided by 48. You're right. 13.3 divided by 48. And that's going to be like um, 0 0.277 moles. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're on it. You're on it. Yeah, less than one. Boom. And that's the skills you need. You don't need to do all of the... You don't need to work out all the answers. So you could kind of go through in your head. And if you can just... The quicker the, the quicker you pick up the exam technique, the less time you spend on each one, the more you've got for the real tricky ones. So well done, dude. Um, Well worked out. Uh, Nice. Right. I better move on. All right, let's move on. <laughs> okay, just a quick reminder of moles and concentration. So not long left in the lesson, just two things to cover. So moles and concentration, you might have done this, well, you would have done this at GCSE. Let me just make my uh, face a bit smaller again so, um, so that I'm not over everything. There we go. Right, um, so moles and concentration. Got to combine both here. Uh, we did one of these in the multiple choice. So if you've got four grams of sodium hydroxide as dissolved in 50 centimeter cubed of water, what is the concentration? See if you can do this one. So again, moles is really just practice with doing the calculations. And then we're going to do, going to introduce one new calculation on the next slide after this. And then, um, just do a couple of practice questions and then we'll wrap up for today and then next week we're going to look at titrations and then after that atom economy and yield which you did in triple and various equations and then that's atomic structure the f uh, that's the first part of the calculations done so Again, we've got to use both these triangles here. This is kind of like GCSE, but you, you'll still have to use these skills in A-level. So um, I've got four grams of sodium hydroxide. What is the concentration? Well, I can work out the moles. And sodium hydroxide is... Sodium's 23.1 mR, actually. At A level, they get really, really specific. If I go back here, no, I'll move this over the face. Anyway, yeah, let's let's not bother with looking at that. So it's one for hydrogen, because sodium hydroxide has the formula Na. Can't really see that. So sodium hydroxide has the formula NaOH. So we got... 23.1 is sodium at A level, plus 16, plus 1. So we actually have an MR of 40.1. That is unreadable. But if we're listening, we can just do it from what I'm chatting about. So this is 4 divided by 40.1. So let's try that out. 4 grams divided by 40.1. And we get the moles. We've got 0 0.0997 moles. So that's how many moles we've got. Now they're dissolved into 50. So I now have the moles. I've got 50 centimeters as my volume. So I want to do moles divided by the volume. Now, I shouldn't make the set mistake of just dividing by 50 centimetres. What do I have to do to the centimetres first? Well, chemists use decimetres, so I need to change 50 centimetres into decimetres. I think I need to just get rid of my face here for a second because I ain't really showing the room here. 
So this stuff. Hold on. Give me one sec. Boom. Right, my face is out of the way. So what I can do now is actually write the working out up here. Because I, I just basically put a picture up there and it just made it a flipping nightmare to actually do the working out. So we've taken four grams. So we use this first triangle first. We divide by 40.1. We get our moles of 0 0.0997 moles um i then need to do my uh moles divided by the volume we just got to remember to divide our volume by a thousand because we don't use centimeters in these equations okay so we're going to do n over uh, v equals c so i want to do moles divided by my volume v equals zero 0 0.05 decimeters. So what I want to do is do that. Divide by 0 0.05 and we get our answer. No, no, no. Whoops, what did I do there? Oh, yeah, 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 40. Hold on. So my moles are 0 0.0997. I'm going to divide them by my concentration. What's my concentration? 50 divided by 1,000. We get 1.99 mole. Yikes. This is a nightmare to write on, actually. I might have to find a different thing rather than using this. Uh, what I use is, for my lessons, I use Google Jamboard, but I probably have to find something else a little bit more easier to use. So, yeah. You're going to do your moles over volume equals the concentration. Right, 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 right. Let's move on. So. Oh, reacting mass. Forgot about these. These are from GCSE. You probably remember this. So what is this? Calculate the mass of calcium oxide that can be produced by heating 25 grams of limestone so we need to write a balanced equation for that. So we got calcium carbonate, which is limestone. Thermal decomposition, you probably remember this is called, when you apply heat. And it's going to break down into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. And I don't believe this one needs balancing, does it? Let's check. 1Ca on each side, 1C on each side, 3 oxygen atoms on each side. No need to balance. Okay, it's a one-to-one -one reaction. So, calculate what would be the maximum mass of calcium oxide I could make if I had 25 grams here. So, if I had 25 grams of this, we need to work out the moles. We do that by calculating the MR. Now I'm going to use, I'm going to cheat and use calcium as an MR of 40. It's actually probably not exactly 40. I'm going to cheat for this question. So we're going to go, the MR is 40 for calcium plus 12. Carbon is definitely 12 because we use it so much and oxygen 16. They're actually not oxygens times three. Um, so The MR of uh, 48 plus 12 plus 40. So we're looking at 52. Plus, it's roughly 100. I think calcium is not exactly 40. I don't, can't remember off the top of my head if calcium is 40.1. It may well be. Um, some of you might know in the chat what calcium's proper MR is. And this will give me the moles 
of calcium carbonate, I need to do mass divided by MR. So and I, the way I've set it out, you can do 25. It's on top of the MR of 100. And that gives us an MR of 0 0.25 gram, uh, moles. <laughs> Say grams. So N is 0 0.25. Right. This means reacting mass wise, I then look at the ratio. We're not interested in the carbon dioxide. That wasn't part of the question. The question was to do with calcium carbonate to calcium oxide. The ratio is one to one. This means that my moles of calcium oxide um, are going to be exactly the same, 0 0.25. And then we just work our way up. This time we're going to multiply. So we multiply by the MR of calcium oxide. Calcium oxide has an MR of 40 plus 16, uh, which is 56. So we go 0 0.25 times 56. The maximum mass that I can make of... Um, is 14 grams so on the way back up with these reacting mass equations you just multiply on the way back up so yeah do you remember what color the lime water goes the carbon dioxide see my cool little drawing there not we've got a gas delivery tube delivering the carbon dioxide into some lime water and of course that goes cloudy so that can come up again um, yeah, that's reacting mass equations. You've done that at GCSE. So it's there again at A level. You've got to use all these skills still involved. Balancing an equation, using the ratio, calculating the moles of the thing you have the information for. Now that you have the moles, using the ratio to find out the moles of the product and then um, working your way back through the mole uh, mass over MR equation, working your way back to find the mass of the product you were looking at. Here's another one. So see if you can work this out. The difference with this one is we're using the word tons. You, if you want, you can, uh, a ton I think is 10 to the 6 grams. But if you want, don't bother changing it. Moles are just about ratios. So what you can do here is just pretend the tons are grams because your answer is going to be in grams. So in a blast furnace, what mass of iron can be obtained from 16 tons of hematite, which is the ore when we find iron oxide? Um, so Fe2O3. So if I have a 16 ton mass of Fe2O3, how could we obtain that? I'm going to give you the MRs and see if you can have a go at this one. Um, Yikes. Now, I need to uh, just give you iron and oxygen for this. So, okay, as it's A level, the accuracy is a little bit different. So, what we're looking at here is the AR of iron is 55.8. The AR of oxygen is 16. So what you've got to do here, you've got to look at the ratio numbers. It's saying you've got 16 tons of iron oxide. How much iron can you make? We've got a ratio of 1 to 2. So now for reacting mass equations, some people prefer to set this out like this. They start with mass, then they write MR, and then they have moles at the bottom. And you work your way down from the one you've got all the information for. So we have 16 tons, but we can think of 16 tons as just 16 grams. 
and work it out like that. If you want, you, if you really want to be accurate in your working out, you can change the tons into grams, but we're not going to do that. We want to save a bit of time. So the MR of iron oxide, I've got to do two times 55.8 and add that to three times 16. So let's whip that in the calculator, two times 55.8. And then we're going to add that to three times 16. And we're going to get 159.6. So the MR for iron oxide is 159.6. We're then going to divide these guys. You should know off by heart by now mass over MR equals moles so we're going to write the moles out at the bottom so uh, 16 divided by 159.6 this isn't really moles this is just the ratio between them um, okay why is it only the ratio between them well because I've not converted that to grams if I want to work out the moles it's going to be like um, a thousand times more or ten thousand times more however many grams there are in a ton so um, I'm going to use the one to two ratio. So for every n, every mole of Fe, for every mole of Fe2O3 iron oxide or hematite, I'm going to make two moles of iron. So we're going to double the moles. So the n over here is going to be double, and we're going to get 0 0.2005. And now I'm going to work my way up by multiplying, uh, timesing this on the way up. We times, we're going to times this by the MR of iron and iron's MR is 55.8. We don't need, don't make the mistake. We don't need to double it because we already have taken care of the ratio by doubling the moles. So we don't need to double it with that. We're just using the the MR or actually technically it's the AR because this is an atom rather than or an element of an atom yeah so oh an atom of an element whatever so and we'll get the mass so 0 0.2 times 55.8 we're gonna get 11.18 tons or 11.2 if we want to round it up to one decimal place 11.18 tons so that's how you would work through that reacting mass. Okay. Now we're coming on to some new A level. This is running slightly longer than I wanted. Another 10 minutes will be done. So um, quick uh, ingestion of H2O, MR18. Right, ideal gas equation. P times V equals NRT. What the hell do all of these mean? You won't have come across this before. Some of you may have. So, P stands for pressure, measured in PA, Pascals. Uh, v is volume. Here's a tricky bit. Meters cubed for volume in this equation. N equals moles. We've used a lot before. And R is the ideal gas constant. And it's 8.31. You just memorize that off by heart. Um, those are the units. And temperature, which is in Kelvin. So you have to be able to rearrange this equation to find any one of those parts. So I can rearrange that to for, uh, in many different ways. So we could rearrange this to to find the moles, we could rearrange this to find the temperature, we could rearrange this to find the volume, or the pressure, or even the gas constant. Why do we use the ideal gas equation? At GCSE, if you did triple science, um, you or separate science for chemistry, you will have actually learned about one mole of any gas at room temperature and pressure has... Um, occupies a volume of 24 decimeters or 24,000 centimeters cubed. However, at A level, we're dealing in situations where the temperature varies. And once the temperature varies, it affects the pressure of a gas and the volume. So therefore, we need to have this equation to give us the ability to calculate moles, temperature, volume or pressure when these situations vary. Now, 
at room temperature, pressure is normally 100, sometimes 101 uh, kPa. kPa, we're going to look out for, we've always got to convert. You're always going to convert at least two of these in a question, and these are really big four mark questions, juicy marks in the A level. Okay, you can get a lot of marks here. So um, these are normally like, say, four marks, and we can get a lot going on here. So I'm back. Let's look at this first one and work through. What volume does 2.2 grams of carbon dioxide occupy at 298K in a pressure of 100 kPa? So this would be minimum three marks in A level, both of these. So let's check this first one out. We've got 2.2 grams of carbon dioxide. What does it occupy at 298K and a pressure of 100 kPa? So we're, we're being asked for volume. So if you're in the chat, can you rearrange this equation to make V the subject, how would you do that? I'll give you 20 seconds and then I'll put the answer up. So see if you can make V the subject. While I sip some H2O. Get my throat from getting dry for talking so much. P times V equals NRT. <laughs> so what is V going to equal? Is that the correct rearrangement? What are we saying? Thank you, JK. NRT over P. Nice. Um, well done. Well done, well done, JK. So, um, well done, well done, well done, well done, well done. You get a boom. Boom! Okay, there's no need for that, I know, but still. Right, so. Um, nice one, nice one, nice one. We need to convert pressure to 100,000. So this is where you're scoring the marks. There's always conversions here. Like I say, these are normally minimum four marks. Well done, Karim. Convert the pressure to 100,000. What about on top? We've got R is always 8.31. So we're going to, we can just write our R in there, 8.31. Now, um, 298K, we don't have to convert the temperature because it's in Kelvin. And you probably did Kelvin at uh, GCSE, if you did triple, you'd have definitely done Kelvin. So 298K, so we'll look that up there. What we need to do next is find the moles. Who can work out the moles of carbon dioxide? How would we work out the moles of CO2? And then we're good to go. What have we got for moles, guys? So you might remember, for moles, you always want to remember that GCSE equation, which is mass over MR. And um, can you guys remember that? One of those things. Mass over MR. You should, by now, from your GCSE, be able to remember the MR or the AR of carbon and oxygen. So what you're really looking at, you've got 2.2 grams of CO2 
And you're going to divide that by the MR of carbon dioxide. Yeah, well done, Karam. 2.2 divided by 44. Yeah, thank you, JK. Both of you guys absolutely on it. Um, so well done. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're um, absolutely smashed. Yeah, there's no need for those, honestly. I'm, I'm just uh, playing around for September. <laughs> So, well, um, yeah, 0 0.05 moles, if I'm not mistaken, and I sometimes am. So, 0 0.05 times 8.3 times 298k divided by 100,000. Now, if you guys have one of these beautiful scientific calculators, little crappy Casio that I've got here, um, one thing I always forget to do is use the brackets. If you don't use the brackets, sometimes um, funny things happen. So I know that sounds crazy, but um, get used to using the brackets as you can make some mistakes. So, um, right, who can come up with the final answer here? Um, bop, 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 bada, bop, bop, bop. Anyone got an answer? If you've got your calculator, if not, I, I shall do it here. So 0. Point, oh gosh, 0. 0.05 multiplied by 8.31 times 298 Kelvin divided by 100,000 equals, this is what I'm getting, guys, 1.238, so times 10 to the minus 3. I'd probably do that to 2DP, uh, so we're going to round that up to... Uh, 1.24 times 10 to the minus 3. And that is, what were they actually asking for? No problems. Is the 0 degrees Celsius? And this is meters cubed. Uh... <coughs> No, 298K is room temperature. If you want to turn 298K into Celsius, you minus 273. So that's 25 degrees. Uh, so if you want to change, so Kelvin, going back to degrees Celsius, you're going to minus 273. If you've got degrees Celsius and you want to go to Kelvin, we add 273. Yeah, that's 90 C. Now, 90 C, we would add 90 degrees. That Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. The 0 C, that's supposed to be 90, by the way. It's probably not come out very well. Yeah, so, and the volume will always be in meters cubed, by the way. In fact, this next one is going to be probably tricky. This next one is tricky, 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 tricky. So, I would say in an exam, this first one is probably worth four marks. I don't know, pretty nice if you can do it. This next one is possibly worth five whole gazingas, which is a lot of marks. Why is it worth so many marks? It's a little bit more difficult. We've got 56 centimeter cubed. A lot of people will have trouble converting 56 centimeters into meters cubed. How do you convert centimeters to meters cubed? You have to know how many centimeters are in one meter cubed. Well, a decimeter it's got a thousand centimeters, but a meter cubed, do you know how many centimeters are in a meter cubed? So again, for this unknown, what are we actually finding? Find the relative formula mass. We want the MR. So I want to rearrange this to find, how should we rearrange this if we want to find the MR? That's right, meters cubed. Yeah, 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 you got it. By a million or 10 to the 6. Awesome. Well done, Karam. Right, how should I rearrange this equation here, though? There's no MR in there. What do I need to find the MR? I'm out of H2O. Damn. So, if I want to find the MR, we're going to need moles, right? 
so I need to make n the subject. Can you guys rearrange that to make n the subject? That will probably get you the first mark in this uh, testing equation. That's right. And what would I do to make moles the subject? How would I isolate moles by themselves? I can do PV divided by and ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can just divide both sides by RT. So PV over RT, right? We'll leave moles on its uh, by itself. So let's see if we can work that. You were absolutely right about the 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were absolutely right about the 56. Hey, don't worry about that. I'm always, <laughs> I'm always doing, uh, you should see some of the live, I've done some things where I, I've messed up. And then, uh, yeah, right. So one, two, three. It's actually easier in your calculator to times by 10 to the minus six, isn't it? Um, because uh, putting in the zeros, you can easily mess that up. So I believe that's 5.6 times 10 to the minus 5 for the volume and that's going to be meters cubed so if we turn 56 centimeters I believe it's 5.6 times 10 to the minus 5 maybe well wrong there um, and then I need the pressure 101 so it's 101,000 so we get a second mark here Woo. Yes, let's put a little comma in there. That's my Pascals. And I want to multiply these bad boys together. And so you're scoring marks in this one for the conversions. They love making you do the conversions. A little bit tricky. So go to Pascals. We convert it to meters cubed. So we definitely, we've rearranged the equation. So we're probably on two or three. Sometimes you need two conversions. Unlike GCSE, got to convert two th you got to, all the conversions sometimes are just worth one mark but the whole thing will be worth five I've then got to convert 90 C into Kelvin so we add 273 so we go 90 plus 273 and we get 363 and we're going to times that by 8.31 Sometimes all three of those conversions are worth one mark or all three are worth two marks, but there we go. They're not normally worth three marks. I'm just going to put a tick there for possible marking points because there are three conversions we've done there and we've rearranged the equation. We now get our answer. Yep, nice one, JK, PV over RT. Now we've got. I've got to somehow come up with the correct answer here, which is going to be... Oh. Could I replace N with mass divided by M R? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Could do. Ah, yeah, that you could do, you could do. Me, I would do this, work out the moles, then uh yeah. You could do, and then do mass over MR, uh, and then I would do mass over moles, 2.2 .2 divided by whatever the, no, 0 0.135, yeah. Yeah, because then, uh, then I can just do all of this. This is going to give me the moles, right? So, no, this is going to give me the moles. So, I want to do this. This is my moles, because this was N. So, this, what I've written here is equal to N. So, we're going to times that by mass. And that will give us 
the MR, right? M, uh, no, we need to divide. Hold on. What do we need to do? Let's work out the moles first of all. You might be able to do it all at once. If you've got your scientific calculator, give it a go. And I will try and work it out on this end the same. Right, 101,000 times 5.6 times 10 uh, to the minus 5. I just need to make sure I bracket because I'm, I'm, I'm disgusting for not bracketing on these big numbers. So I believe the number of moles, you can check me on this because it would be useful if you could, is 1.875, let's say, moles. Um, hopefully that's all right. Now that's the moles. We've got the mass is 0 0.135. So technically, if we use our equation mass over MR times moles and we can find the MR pull up hold up Yeah, you do. But guess what? You were right originally. I hate it. I do this sometimes. When I'm doing these live, you're like... Yeah. You were right originally, weren't you? When we rearrange this equation to make N the subject, it's going to be RT over PV, isn't it? So we, we got... I'll have scored the marks for the... I'll have scored the marks for the um, conversions. But it's going to be RT over PV. It just gives me a chance. Right? Wrong. Yeah. That. Pfft. Yeah. You were right the first time. But it gave me a chance to play my stupid video clip. So. Um, you were right the first time. I need to reverse all of this. So I was just looking at the answer that coming up on my calculator and being like, what the hell? So we need to reverse this and to. Um, Are you sure? I think you was right. I think you were right. I think <laughs> if we no well, and then we're going to end up doing mass, which is zero. Uh, okay, let's do it as you're right. Zero point one three five divided by, and this doesn't look like it's going to be right to me. I don't think so. I don't think so. This doesn't sound right. And I'll tell you why it's not right. Because there's no such molecule <laughs> that has 0 0.072 for its MR. So, uh, me thinks this is wrong. Um, uh, I think you were right the first time. Um, so, that's why I gave myself the wrong video. <laughs> That's a weird MR to come out with. <laughs> okay, thank you. I was right originally. All right, then. It's a bit of a strange MR. I think I've not timed something by a thousand there, but um, I look like I'm a thousand out. But there we go. Is there something with an MR of 0 0.072? I don't think so. So maybe I, I writ this, uh, this one out a bit different. Okay. We might come back to that one. That one looks like it could be a bit ropey. So, another little challenge then. Um, 
moving on swiftly 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 uh we'll soon find out these are all ideal gas equations so just going to finish after this so i'm going to stick around for another 10 minutes just to to do these you don't have to but these are all i you'll need the ideal gas equation for all three of these so which one of the following gases which one of the following samples of gas when sealed in a vessel of volume 0 0.1 meter cubed is at the highest pressure? So which one of these is at the highest pressure? So what we're going to do here, all of these require the ideal gas equation PV equals um, NRT. And Karen, by the way, I think originally with the previous question, it would have been far easier if I'd just done what you said and and just didn't even bother rearrange. Oh, well, yeah, could rearrange it. But instead of, um, we could have just done pressure times volume equals mass over MR. Yeah, and worked out the mass over the MR. Yeah, and then rearranged it from there. I think that would have been a lot easier, actually. But, um, oh, my screen's flicking. What's that all about? Right, let's have a look at this one. So, what we've got to do is, as fast as we can, try and work out um, which one of these would be at the highest pressure. Well, we've got 1.6 grams of each, so you could do the long way of going through each one here. We go, right, moles, blah, blah, blah. So, which one of the one on falling samples of gas when sealed in the blah, 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 highest pressure? So, pressure is equal we rearrange this to find the pressure so it's n r t over v and then we want to find out which one's the highest pressure we know the volume is 0 0.1 so we've got 1.6 grams of helium 1.6 the mass of helium the mr is 4 so we've got 0 0.4 times 8.31 what's the temperature 100 and then we divide by 0 0.1 so if we do all of that we get a pressure of 3 3 2 4 So hopefully, if you follow that, you'll get a pressure of 3324. And then for this one, well, we've got we've got a larger N. So for this one, without even doing the calculation, I know that everything else is the same, except for the MR, which means I'm going to have... Um, oh, hold on. Let's have a little look. What's the MR of... Uh, methane it's 16 so 1.6 divided by 16 is 0 0.1 oh my good gosh which one of the following samples of gas when sealed in a volume of 0 0.1 is at the highest pressure if I rearrange that equation correctly guys I hope I've rearranged that blooming correctly. And then 1.6 of oxygen, 1.6 divided by 32.
600, okay. Two four nine point three divided by zero point one. So I think this one is two four nine three. So not quite as big. <laughs> Let's work out the next one. One point six grams sulfur dioxide. Sulfur is roughly thirty two. Oxygen O two is thirty two. So we're looking at sixty four. One point six divided by 64 equals the moles, 0 0.025. We're then going to take 0 0.025, times it by 8.31, which is R, times it by the Kelvin, which is 100. And hopefully, that's the correct answer. <laughs> and then we're going to divide it by the volume. And the volume is always in this question, 0 0.1. And no, the Kelvin was 1,200 U wally tom so uh 1.6 divided by 64 equals 0 0.025 moles times 8.31 times the kelvin of 1200 divided by 0 0.1 for some reason i think this comes out about the same yeah well i suppose yeah, 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 yeah. That was double the, that was half the moles. This one was um, half the moles of the top one, but double the temp. So those are both 2493. Um, so this one here should be A, has the highest pressure. Divided by, yep, so this should be 831, and so the answer to this one should be A, he says, boom, it is, so, um, yeah, let's look at the next one. Which one of the following contains the smallest number of moles of carbon dioxide gas? Super long, but essentially smallest number of moles. That's quite easy. Two point, you're going 2.65 over... Whoa. 2.65 over 44, essentially. So this is going to be like... Zero point zero six moles. That's not right in green. Green's disgusting. Um, yep, yeah, zero point zero six. Uh, oh my good gosh! Pretty long, right? To do all of these is pretty damn long, right? Zero point zero five meters. So we got to put that. We want to find moles. So if we want to find moles, we're going to rearrange to do, for these ones, we've got all the, the temperatures and everything. So we need to use the ideal gas equation. And we need to look at N is equal to PV over RT. So PV over RT, we can go. Yeah, N is equal to PV over RT. So let's hit it. God, my brain has stopped working. So pressure times volume. Let's go. 33,000 times volume 0 0.015. That gives us 495. So we've got 495. This is for B, by the way. We're going to divide that now by 8.3. 31 times 1000 which is 8310 so we get 495 
and we come up with the answer of 0 0.05, whoa, there's the 0, 0.9. So you can see how close that is. So we can definitely, well, we know B is not the right answer, but maybe there's one bigger than, um, oh no, sorry, B is probably the right answer. Read the question again, Tom. We can get rid of this one. It's not A, because they want the one with the smallest number of moles. So now we can just look at the others quickly. They want the smallest number of moles, not the biggest. This was 0 0.06, which is bigger than this, so we can get rid of A. Uh, for C, we've got 1.5 decimeters. Okay, um, what is that in meters cubed? Really annoying. Uh, so let's... We want to convert that to meters cubed. That's 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed. So um, I'm going to times that by 327. No, volume times pressure times by 200,000. So the pressure is 200,000. And we're going to get, for this one, if we times the pressure uh, by the volume, we get 300. And then underneath... We need 8.31, so we want to do 8.31 times the Kelvin. And the Kelvin is 327. We need to add 273 to convert those degrees Celsius to Kelvin. And we get a big num big old number four nine eight six and then we just want to put that in and this is too big zero point zero six again. So again we can get rid of this one. That's not the smallest number of moles. The answer is probably B, but we just need to check it just in case. 1,500 centimetres. If you want to turn centimetres into metres cubed, we need to times by 10 to the minus 6. So, okay. Okay. So we get 1.5, exactly the same as before, times 10 to the minus 3. So it's the same as part C. We're going to times that by 100,000 and we're going to get 150 on top. Yeah, I've run out of room. So if I was continuing this one down here, I'm going to end up with, we're doing the same rearrangement. I'm going to have 150 and we're going to divide this to find the moles by 300 Kelvin by 300 uh, multiplied by 8.31 so 150 divided by 300 times 8.31 close brackets and we're going to get again 0 0.06 pretty much the same answer there so the answer was 100% B here um, I know these are painful to watch someone going through each one painfully but there we go um, let's do the last one and then call it a night after all these painful calculations. What is the volume occupied by 10.8? So I just need to really get on with this um, and get smash through this. Um, I should probably stop waffling, shouldn't I? Uh, yeah. Let's You'll get on better with. move on all right, all right, all right. or else. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'll get on with it. What is the volume occupied by 10.8 grams of Freon at 100 kPa and 273? This one's a bit easier because um, we're just going to do volume again. So we're going to rearrange this. V is equal to nRT uh, over P. So let's smash through it and find the right answer. So um, we need the volume. Righty ho. So I got oh sugar. Oh, 
of Freon. Oh my gosh, are they not giving me the MR of Freon? <sighs> Got to work out the MR of Freon. That's pretty damn painful. So I'm just going to assume, I'm going to go closest here. Uh, so 71 for the chlorine, just being roughly, roughly. Uh, 19 for the fluorine is 38, two fluorines, two chlorines are 71, two 19s for the fluorine are 38. So let's just smash out the MR like that. 12 plus 71 plus 38. So our MR of uh, Freon, so we're looking at the MR is 121. I've got 10.8 over 121 will give me the moles. So 10.8 grams divided by 121 for the MR, and that gives me, I'm dealing with 0.089, right? Roughly, roughly moles. I shouldn't really do this roughly, roughly, because look how uh, close together the answers are, uh, some of the answers. So we've got 0.089 moles. So let's do that times 8.31 times 273. So we're going to do moles times R, which is 8.31, times 273, which is the Kelvin. And we're going to come up with 202.4 for our top number. That is N times R times T. So we did N, the number of moles, found by doing the grams, 10.8 grams, divided by 121, which is the MR of Freon, hopefully. Uh, equals 0 0.089 moles. We're going to do moles times 273 for the Kelvin times 8.31 for the R. And now we need to divide it by the pressure. The pressure is in kilopascals. What do we have to do? We have to convert that back to pascals. So, and this should give us the volume, but the volume will be in meters cubed. So we're going to have to do a further translation into either centimeters or decimeters in order to find out the answer. So 202 divided by 100,000 and we get two point so if we do this we're going to get 2.02 uh, let's call it 2.02 um, times 10 to the 4 so we'd round down uh, this is going to be times 10 to the minus 3 so 2.02 0, 02 times 10 to the minus 3 and this is meters cubed so if i want to convert that back into centimeters um yeah i would need to multiply by a million or 10 to the 6 and that would give me 2024 centimeters cubed so it's not that and it's not that. Now I need to put that into decimeters. So I cancelled out my centimeters. If you want to turn centimeters into decimeters, we divide by a thousand. And my answer is 2.024 decimeters. So the answer here for the final question is A. Boom. That was long. That was painful. So, um, yeah. I'm going to go back and revisit the one before that. But... Uh, not right now. So I hope you've enjoyed. Um, that was dealing with the ideal gas equation for those multiple choice. They take a lot of working out and it's a lot of painful watching me go through it, I'm sure. But um, there we go. I hope you find some of it useful. I'm going to put timestamps and anything that has come up as incorrect. By the time you're watching this on a rewatch, the correct any corrections will be in there that are needed. But that's all good. All right, guys, take care. And uh, yeah. Let's get to the marks. See ya.